Ho ho, and I hope you had a Merry Christmas, YouTube. This is Angelos, aka Pure230688, and I will be bringing you another 2v2 online commentary battle. Okay, so I know it's been a while since I uploaded the vid, and it takes me a while to upload vids. That is because I have quite a bit of work, but even then, I'm afraid my cup and string net connection can't really handle many uploads or downloads in a week. I'm also capped to a measly 10 gigabytes, which isn't very good. Perhaps I should upgrade to Synoptic's Wombat connection, but I can imagine that um, the Wombat might need feeding, so that might lead to problems. Anyway, speaking of the uh, Koala Hugger, I have him here in this 2v2 battle. Uh, he, I won't be focusing anything on his side of the battle because he smells. <laughs> Uh, not only that, he his opponent um, turns into an abomination that is the AI, and so I won't be focusing too much on this. So I'll be tr treating this battle as a 1v1 with him adding some uh, silly stuff perhaps later on. I don't know. Maybe not. Probably not. Okay, so uh, I'm uh, this is I'm playing as a Dutch, and my opponent is Great Britain. This will be virtually all you see here. Okay, so my opponent's put all of his cavalry onto his right flank. And then he's um, set up in this sort of very tight box formation, which has allowed me to thin my guys out and begin to envelop him already. He's, he's such a far, a uh, long way away from the from his ally, even though it's an AI, uh, that it's allowed me to. You can see how I've managed to bend my rifles round, and I've got two Swiss flanking. I sent two um, hussars round his flank to see if he um, what he'd do. He formed squares and then unformed them. So I did this again to keep annoying him and see what he'd do. This time he, I don't know, he might not have been watching what I was doing, so I thought, well, what the hell with it, I'll just charge him. I wasn't expecting him to um, let me do this, so I smash into the rear of his men, uh, cause a great deal of damage, reducing his line by about 20 or 30. Then I crash into his green jackets, and at the same time, the, this massive disruption on his left allows me to push my two rifles up into range of his green jackets and get the first volley off. Unfortunately, some of my calves stay snagged on the green jackets and uh, incur losses from friendly fire from my rifles, which is uh, annoying, but I needed to get that volley off before the green jackets fired back, so, yeah. The reason I bring Hussars is they're throwaway cav anyway, you can see now that volley completely annihilates that green jacket unit. So, they're there to die one way or another, if it isn't from the enemy's bullets, it's going to be from my bullets, so, yeah. If, you, if you're going to be in my army, don't be in a throwaway cav unit like the Hussars. Uh, I kind of use them like a mobile meat shield at times as well to uh, prevent additional damage to other units of my army. Okay, so uh, after my rear charge on his uh, rifle units, it de it's destroyed his uh, uh, light imp screen for his left flank, so I've dispatched two Swiss and my remnants of my Hussar regiments to mop his left flank up completely. I send one Hussar into one regiment of line and then one into the other. You can see how he forms a square at the very, quite a good time to form a square because it reduces the uh, damage but it allows my men to continue firing into him without taking any loss. Now here um, he must have thought that he needed to do something to turn the tide and uh, perhaps this wasn't the wisest move to have made was the central charge onto my main line with a line inf push with no meat shield guard in it, so I get the first volley off with my rifles and then fall back to my line. Notice the gaps in my line, I have two line on my far right over here, two line in the centre, uh, no sorry, three line in the centre, and then two on my left, so if he comes into my centre like this I will completely envelop him. Now here, this is where I, um, well my opponent does quite a smart thing here, I hadn't noticed he'd done it, he turned his rifle units round to face me. I actually knew he'd done that, but I didn't think uh, he'd be able to form up and get a volley off in time. So I managed to get one Hussar regiment in, but his line regiments then turn round, and seeing that, I realised my guys have got no hope at all to get out of there alive. So I tried to throw them into his line to do, to do added disruption, but it doesn't work. So yeah, there there goes my throwaway cav. Uh, I went a bit sooner than I would like, but it doesn't matter, because they've done their job of completely... Uh, destroying his left flank. So because he turned his line round to face my cav, I push my line up into range of his and uh, begin uh, shooting at him while he can't fire back. On my left I've got my two dragoons and my two heavy cav as a deterrent for his entire cav force that he's got on my on yeah on his right. It's a bit bizarre the fashion he put his army in to completely give me the left flank without a fight. It's an interesting way of doing things. 
Okay, so here he pushes his free line up again with no meat shield cover. Uh, I say meat shield because you really, if you want to advance into a hail of rifle bullets, you need something to um, for them to shoot at before your prized possessions, i.e. your line regiments, get into range. But he didn't do that. Okay, so here he realizes I've encircled him. I pull my rifles out of the way uh, because I know what he was trying to do. Just a last gasp, uh, just rush into my line with his uh, with his line, I should say, with, into my rifles with his line, I should say. Uh, but I ensure he doesn't do that. Then realizing his his uh, line inf, which is pushed too far forward, has become exposed because his left has collapsed, allowing me to flank. He's now going to try and reform, and I'm not going to let him. Okay, so he does a melee charge here on my Swiss, uh, which is a decent enough thing to do if you want to die quicker, I suppose. It's interesting how um, uh, how that unit could, if he had reformed it, could have uh, given me extra losses if it had been shooting at me, but I feel that when his left collapsed, he realised that he made a mistake and then kind of gave up after that. But saying that, he does a few d more semi-decent things, so I, I'm going to focus on them. Okay, so here, uh, with his remaining line in the center, I'm going to start wrapping around either flank. You can see that one line that charged into my Swiss, how quickly it died as well. So, yeah, that's what I was saying. Again, he does a melee charge on my rifles. I knew he was going to do that, so I kept my rifles out there to get him snagged, and so my men can shoot him. Uh, I tend to use, at this stage of the battle, my rifles as a meat shield. Uh, so that's what they were doing, is to ensure my line does not get hit by his line. Now here he's got some uh, Fergusons, heavily, well heavily upgraded, two Chevron Fergusons, which he's kept out of the battle for the time being, for some reason, perhaps he didn't want them to get shot at. And he starts shooting at my very far left flank, which um, I'm going to just suck it up for the time being. No I'm not, I'm actually going to run away. <laughs> I, I sucked it up for a little bit while I destroyed his line, and now I'm going to run away. Seeing his Dragoons uh, moving on to my left flank as well, he's now at last mobilising his cav. I put down my mobile forest, which is my stake line, and then retreat to a better defensive position. So, putting stakes down, not only does it give me a bonus if he decided to charge me, which I don't, don't think he would have done, it also allows my men to take uh, some sort of cover behind the wooden stakes, which is totally ridiculous, but hey, I'm not going to complain. Anything that gives me more cover, I'm going to use it. So, it, saying that, his his Ferguson starts sniper glitching me, which I'll zoom in on in a sec to show you what I mean. And that rifle unit gets completely destroyed at about twice the normal range it should be uh, destroyed at. So here, uh, he had some green jackets that came back from Routwin. I melleed one with a Swiss here, which went sort of the plan. I had, him, I had my Swiss in guard mode, so they kind of wanted to stay in formation, which wasn't too helpful. Uh, and the other unit, I sent a Dragoon unit after it, which completely destroyed it. So, uh, you can see he's got one line left, the rest of his line and rifle force has completely been destroyed. And what you're going to witness here is how his cav force gets destroyed now. And those two blasted Fergusons, which I'll show you more about in a sec. Now there they are. So, look, you can see the smoke puffs. Yeah, you can't see them, but they're somehow shooting me. It's called the sniper glitch, is when in Light Inf Doctrine, you click an attack order on an enemy unit, and then... Uh, you keep that attack order even when the enemy unit moves out of range it keeps firing and firing and firing but saying that his continuous firing like that allowed my dragoons to know exactly where they were hidden and so I just smashed into them here with one of my dragoon regiments and then I'm gonna yeah then I pull that dragoon regiment out and then I pull another one you another unit in from the other side turn the dragoon unit I'd sent out and pull it back in again to completely crush these Ferguson's. Unfortunately, um, he decides to send his own Dragoons, which makes me want to get out of the way pretty damn quickly. Luckily for me, he has one Dragoon behind the other shooting each other in the back, which is interesting. So when you have Dragoons, you've got to watch their fields of fire, because they, they don't care who who they shoot, so long as they get to shoot, I think. They, they'll, they'll hit your own men and each other, and it's just, it's just quite funny. Okay, so here he sends his Heavy Cav in to do a disruption, but I snag it on one of my Heavy Cav. And then you can see as I pull my heavy cav out of the way so my line can open fire, and then that drags his line, yeah, his cav in front of my line. I then smash into his uh, other cav from the rear, which will quickly rout them. Seeing the danger to his heavy cav, uh, he pulls his dragoons back. Again, you can see him blasting away as they're moving, and again, they're hitting one another as they come towards me. Uh, he wants to get them onto the flanks of my cav, which is a decent enough move. So I pull my cav out of the way and allow my rifles to shoot them to pieces. 
So basically, if he had done moves like this with his Dragoons and Heavy Cav earlier on, it would not have allowed me to get the advantage so quickly. But saying that, he probably should have spaced his Dragoons out on either flank. So here he thought I was going to charge into a, into his stake line, uh, but really, who needs stakes when you have micro? <laughs> and uh, I just uh, switch my Dragoons around either flank of the stake line, and then then I see an opportunity. It actually took me off guard there. I thought I was going to charge the Ferguson. Yeah, I saw an opportunity to strike the Dragoons in the rear, because I realised there's one Dragoon regiment could probably do enough damage to them. So I fire and then charge into that one Dragoon Regiment, which looked pretty sweet, and then I charge into the um, Ferguson's with my other Dragoon Regiment. So that was basically it. The, the, the battle was probably over before this happened, but that was the last bits I wanted to show. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that 1v1 battle, even though I'm going to call it a 2v2. Thanks for watching, and until next time.